everybody. It's Allison at stlprostretch.com, and today we're going to talk about hamstrings. We have three hamstrings. A lot of people don't know that, but we do. And um, it's important to know like which one is tight. Maybe they're all tight. Who knows? Maybe your calf is what's tight. I find that a lot. A lot of people think they can't touch their toes because their hamstrings are too tight, but a lot of the time it's because their calves are too tight or a number of other things. Anyway, we're going to talk about the two inner hamstrings, well, I like to call them inner hamstrings, um, they, they all attach to the same point at the ischial tuberosity, the bony part of your hip. And then the two, the central and medial hamstring run along and attach at the tibia, so your, your shin, really. And then the outer one attaches on the outside of the knee near the fibula. fibula. So the outside one is usually the one that we favor, we use the most. A lot of times it's just... Our, the way we move, it just tends to be the most overworked. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with the medial hamstring and kind of get in touch with like what it feels like, where it is, and what it, and what it does, kind of. So we're going to bring your knee up and take it out to the side. Just let it fall. I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to make the OK sign with my hand, and I'm going to loop that OK sign around the heel. If you cannot reach your foot, use a strap around your foot and just hold it like that. And then we are go I'm going to kick my heel down toward my groin. So my arm is going to move the opposite direction and try to slow that movement down. So I'm going like this with my arm, and my heel is moving toward my groin. And then I'm going to keep kicking down with the heel and move it open. Just move within your range of motion. We don't want the knee to like move away from you. So um, just keep the knee at that bent position that you had it started. It doesn't really move. I'm slowing the movement down with my hand and then opening up. Now, ask yourself, where do I feel this? If you feel it out here, that means you may have a little bit of a muscle imbalance because you use your outer hamstring more often. Now, if you can't feel that inner hamstring at all, take your right hand, put it on your inner thigh, kind of toward the back, and see if you can feel it contract. It's, it's hard because it's kind of wrapped up in your uh, inner thigh muscles, and those are some pretty big muscles. But see if you can just mentally um, engage that muscle and start to create a neurological connection there. Again, I'm keeping my heel kicking down toward the groin and I'm letting my arm win now. And I'm gonna switch sides. So, knee goes out to the side, make the okay sign with my hand, hook my heel, heel kicks down to the, to the groin, arm is moving the opposite direction. The whole time the heel is kicking down toward the groin, the arm is moving the opposite direction, just slowing the movement down as it comes to the groin and then letting the arm win as you open up. Now, you can put your hand here, see if you can feel that muscle contracting. This is kind of like muscle activation. We're creating a neurological connection to that muscle and once you start, your brain starts to realize that, yes, I have this muscle and I can use it and maybe um, use it a little more often in certain situations. It's almost like when you, you know, you do glute exercises or you do squats, you tell yourself, okay, I'm really going to focus on my glutes. I'm going to focus on um, contracting those while I'm doing this movement, just being mindful. Oh, my arm's getting tired. Usually that happens, especially if I haven't done this stretch for a while. All right. And then we're going to move to the central hamstring. And you can do your central hamstring like this, kicking down and then pulling back, which is a great stretch, I will say. But I prefer to do it in an upright position. I've done this before. Pillow. Down. I'm going to kneel, take one foot forward. I've got my blocks here. I'm going to dig this heel 
into towards me, dig the heel towards me to pull me forward, and then keep digging the heel towards me and pull back. Now, I am pulling my toes back toward my shin. You do not have to do that. I would actually like you to try it both with a pointed toe and with the toes pulled back toward the shin. The toes pulled back toward the shin is going to give a lot more calf. The pointed toe is just going to be all hamstrings. So this is your central hamstring. The balancing muscle to this central hamstring is your hip flexor, your iliopsoas. The balancing muscle to the medial hamstring is the lateral quad. Actually, we call this agonist antagonist. So the hip flexor and the lateral quad would be the antagonist. And this central hamstring would be the agonist here. And we're going to switch sides to the other side. I'm digging the heel, pulling it towards, pulling it towards me to contract. And then I'm going to keep the heel digging towards me and pull back. And if you notice that you're feeling it mostly out here, yes, then probably your outer hamstring is the tightest. I love getting this calf stretch in this one. It's just, I feel it all the way down. I'm feeling a little uh, tight on the out, outer hamstring myself. And then for the outer hamstring, there's two ways you can do it, but today, I'm going to do it sitting in a chair. Um, you don't have to sit up straight. I usually don't. And you can do this sitting against a wall as well. Just make sure that you're kind of at least a, oh, 6 to 12 inches. Your butt is 6 to 12 inches away from the wall. So you're not like, it's going to be difficult if you don't. I'm going to lean back in my chair just lazy. And I'm going to take my uh, left knee up and cross it over. I'm going to take my right hand and grab the outside of my foot. There we are. We're moving this way. My heel is going to be kicking down toward the outside of my hip. My arm is moving the opposite direction to slow the movement down. And then I'm going to keep picking the heel to the outer hip and I move it across the body. Now, if you feel pain in your uh, sits bones when you're doing these exercises, please stop doing them. Um, I I know a lot of people get that, and usually we stop stretching the hamstrings altogether and just work on opening up the front and the inner thigh and outer thigh, and then sometimes the, the femur rotates a little bit differently and we're able to get back into the hamstrings without having that pain. But if you're feeling it directly at your sits bones, I would say foam roll it, like just don't overstretch it. Don't stretch it at all. Usually that means that it's already stretched too much. All right, we'll do the other side. My knee is over to the left. Take my left hand, grab the outside of my foot, kick the heel toward the outer hip. I'm going the opposite direction with my arm to slow the movement down. And then I'm going to pull it across. My heel is still kicking down toward my outer hip. I'm feeling this all the way into the outer portion of my calf, but also the outer hamstring.
Now we're going to get into the uh, balancing muscle, which would be the antagonist to all of these stretches. The one we just did. So that muscle goes like out, right, to the side. That's how it bends. So if it goes out, then we have to stretch the groin, right? If it goes out, the groin is getting stretched while it contracts. And if it goes in, then this outer hamstring is getting stretched. So let's stretch the groin. Sit in butterfly. Bring your knees towards each other. Put your elbows or your forearms inside and push out with your arms. I like to do it palms up. You can do it either way. So I'm pulling my knees together. I'm slowing the movement down by pushing out with my elbows. And then I'm going to keep pulling my knees together and push open with my arms. This is actually a double stretch. As you bring your knees together, if you kind of relax your shoulders and round your upper back, you're getting a rhomboid stretch. And then we're going to move on to the hip flexor, which I think I do. I think I do this stretch in almost every video, but if there's one stretch, I could, if I could get people to do one stretch, it would be this one. This is the kneeling position again. I'm going to imagine my left knee pulling in toward my chest. I'm going to get that movement going. Belly in to the opposite of sticking your butt out. Shift forward and back. And then switch sides. How many reps? Depends on how many you want to do. You could make this into a workout and do 20 if you want. So my back knee is pulling in toward my pulling out. Imagine my back knee pulling in toward the fetal position. Or imagine your back knee pulling forward, your front foot pulling back. That's a good way to think about it. Belly in. Do the opposite of sticking your butt out. Shift forward and back. You'll get to the point where you know, you'll feel if you've done enough. And then we'll move on to the quad. Um, I have a two quad stretches. Well, there are, are more, but... Um, I'll do one easy quad stretch, and if you want to stay with that one, you can do the other side, and then I'll do the quad stretch up against the chair again. So this one, it's, it's the balancing muscle or the antagonist of the medial hamstring. So the medial hamstring does this, right? And when you stretch it, the quad has to contract a little bit. So to, to stretch the quad, we have to go the opposite direction. It's like open, close, right? So put your foot out to the side, 45 degree angle, cross your right, your ankle over, press the knee into the ankle, ankle presses into the knee, create that contraction, and then rotate the knee in and open. This is another double stretch. You get a glute stretch as you move the knee in open to the side, which is really nice. We want to try to keep the hip on the ground. It will pop up a little bit. Just try to minimize it. And if you're searching for that deeper stretch here, 
and you're able, pull your heel toward the outside of the hip. I was showing a friend this stretch um, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about the yoga pose, Supta Varasana. And this is really a lot like Supta Varasana. It's just a kind, kinder, gentler way to make your way into the stretch. Because my knees have no problem with this, but they do have a problem with the Supta Varasana in yoga. And it's not while I'm doing it. It's, it's um, afterwards, like the days after my knee just feels like it hurts and unstable. Anyway, we're going to switch sides. So foot out to the side. Press ankle into knee, knee into ankle. Rotate in and open. This is such a, a nice, easy stretch to do. And you really just work within your range of motion. Maybe you only get about this far. That's fine. And again, if you want to make that into a deeper quad stretch, you're going to pull this heel in toward the outer hip. I could do this all day. And then we're going to take it to the chair and do the quad stretch of the chair. So those of you, I said it was only going to do one, one leg, but I did the whole thing because it felt so good. And then for the rest of you, um, the, some of you might not want to do this quad stretch at the chair. It is a much deeper stretch. It is a much more intense stretch. If you can do it, I would say do it. But if you're done with that, the quad stretching for now, just you can watch and uh, – Pretend like you're stretching. Do some downward dogs. Do the, the downward dog stretch. That would be a good one to add to this. So I'm, I'm bumping my foot up the chair. I'm pulling the opposite foot through. Here I am. I'm pushing my foot into the chair. And then I'm going to keep pushing into the chair and back it up. I'm only going to do a few of these. Because I've already stretched my quad out a little bit. But feel free to do more. And then switch sides. I'm pushing my foot into the chair. Belly in. Do the opposite of taking your butt out. Pushing my foot into the chair the whole time. Okay, and that about does it for today. All about hamstrings. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment, and I'll try to answer it, or suggestions for future videos for other stretches. That'd be great. Happy stretching. See you later. Bye.